Hi everyone, welcome back to the series. In the last episode, we managed to get uh, collisions working. We've got a uh, player killing the enemies, the enemies are destroying, the bullets are being destroyed, and we're also taking damage to the player and losing health and lives. Now in this video, we're going to be creating the shields, the little blockades that are above the player in the original Space Invaders games. Now these are going to all contain their own individual health elements, and they're going to destroy accordingly, dependent on the current health. So we'll just jump straight into it. Now, as you may remember, we've already created the prefab for this shield. So we'll drag and drop one in here, just so we have a reference point. And inside the shield object, we have two separate objects. One for the left side, and one for the right side. Now, what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to amend our prefab so we'll open this up and for both of our left and right sides we're going to want a box collider 2d now these should be the right sizes by default they aren't never mind we'll just amend these really quickly we'll drag this in and we'll drag this down go for the right side and we'll edit that again bring this down and bring this in a little tip there as well, I don't know if you caught that. Uh, when you're amending prefabs, whenever you make a single change, the default action is to auto-save. So, like you saw there the first time, if I have auto-save on and I edit the collider, whenever I move it one on one axis, it'll auto-save and then it loses focus. The way to get around that is just uncheck auto-save, make all your amendments, and then either click save or turn auto save back on. Okay, so we already have our shield prefab, so we can go ahead and create our shield script. We'll add this in and open it up in Visual Studio. Now this is gonna be a relatively simple script. We don't need update, we still need start. And inside, we're gonna want a public sprite array and we'll call these states. Now, what we're gonna put in here is, if you remember from the very first video, our blockers have different states of damage, dependent on how much damage they've taken. So we're gonna to wanna to keep a reference to the correct side, left or right, and we're gonna to wanna to keep a reference to all of the states of damage. So we'll keep those in an array. We're also going to want to have a private int, and we'll have that as health. Why can't I spell health? And by default, we want to set health to four. Now, the reason we're setting it to four is we'll have four different damage states, and we want each of those damage states to represent every one of our health, if that makes sense. It will make sense when it's up and running. <laughs> So because we're going to want to change our sprite based on the health value, we're also going to need a private sprite renderer. We'll just call this SR, not ST. And we'll grab this in our start method. So simply SR equals get component sprite renderer. And we're only going to need one method in here, and this is going to be the on collision enter 2D method. And we're going to need two checks in here. The first one, we're going to check if the collision dot game object dot compare tag is equal to enemy bullet. First of all, we want to destroy the collision game object, so we want to destroy the enemy bullet. We want a minus one off our shield's health, and then we'll do a check for if our health is less than or equal to zero. We'll destroy the game object itself or else. Now this is where we're doing that little bit of trickery with the sprite renderer. So we'll change the sprite renderer's sprite and we'll set it to states health minus one. 
Now, the reason we want to use minus one here is because our array is actually zero based, whereas our health is actually using solid integers four through zero. So using minus one here makes sure two things. It makes sure we get the right sprite, and it also makes sure we don't get an index out of range exception on our sprite array. And finally, the second check that we need to perform is we want to check if the collision.gameObject.compareTag is equal to friendly bullet. Now we will need to create that tag. I don't think we've created that one just yet. We'll destroy collision.gameObject. Now if you've ever played the original Space Invaders, you'll know that you can actually damage your own shields if you shoot at them from below. I've never really liked that. Some people do because they can tactically shoot up through the shield and uh, get the enemies from above. Personally, I'm not a fan. You can do that either way. If you want damage to be done whenever you shoot a shield yourself, you can just add this collision for friendly bullet up here as an or statement. So if the collision's enemy bullet or friendly bullet, we'll take the health down regardless and we'll destroy it if we need to. But like I said, I'm going to leave that out. I'll leave that one up to you though. So again, before we forget, what we'll go ahead and do, we'll go and add this tag. So we'll add a new tag. We'll call this friendly bullet. And a friendly bullet prefab needs to be tagged as that. Perfect. So now the only thing left to do is we're not going to put our shield script on the shield parent object. What we want to do we want to put that on uh, individual left and right sides. So we'll drag this over and we see we have our states. And quite simply all we need to do is we'll select our left side at first, open up our sprites and lock the inspector so we don't lose focus. And then we'll select all four states. No we won't because we want to make sure that these states are actually in reverse order because our zero is actually a full health block, this one right here. So we want to make sure that that is the highest possible index to match with four being our max health. So the way that we can do this, we'll just drag them in one by one, but we'll start with the highest first. So block left three will go in first, then two, then one, then zero. And again, if we select the right one, lock that inspector and do exactly the same. Three, two, one, zero. We'll save that. And now if we drag in our shield prefab, we'll just put one in for now, just to make sure that everything's working. We should when we fire, our friendly bullets can't go through, and when the enemy bullets hit it, we see we've got a bit of damage on our left-hand side, but our right-hand side was fine up until the right-hand side just got damaged then. So we can see that if we get another shot on this, we should go down to our next state of decay, and we do, but we're still perfectly shielded behind this up until the point when all of the damage is done, such as this. Now we can shoot through on our left side, but we still have our right side intact. So what we can do, we can just create our full shields. I think on the original there's four shields maybe, but I think for our game, we're gonna be all right with three. And again, I was holding control there to snap these into position, so we have an exact 16 pixel gap in between each of our shields. So now we can just rename these just so I know exactly what they are. So this one will be left shield, this one is right shield, and this one is middle shield. Bring this down, and uh, not that it matters, but I want all these to be in order, left, middle, right. And just like that, we have our shields working perfectly fine. We can shoot between the gaps. We can't shoot through them, and the enemies can damage these when they manage to hit 
uh, shields. Perfect. You see, the game's coming along quite well already. So I think that about does it for this video. Nice and short and sweet, but now we have shields in place to protect our players. In the next video, we're going to take a little bit of a break from scripting and we're going to create a bit of the environment. So we're going to add in some background images, maybe add a little bit of animation to those. We'll see how that goes. But it should start making the game feel a lot more polished rather than just the standard Unity blue background with a few green sprites on it. So you'll be able to jump over and watch that one as and when you see fit. And I'll see you there.